Well, smartphones have changed our life and also presented a lot of opportunities for all of us. The next speaker, Varsha Tagare from Qualcomm Ventures, will talk about the opportunities in smartphone. May I request Varsha to come on stage and present her views. Testing? OK, great. Um, I see lots of familiar faces uh, in Pune. Uh, can I just have a show of hands if people are looking to start new ventures? Entrepreneurs. A lot of concentration here. Come on, guys, on the other side. <laughs> OK, great. Uh, fantastic. It's a, it's a great time uh, to be here. You can just put it in screen. I represent uh, Qualcomm Ventures. I'm based in uh, Mumbai. I have uh, two partners in uh, Bangalore. And we delighted to be here to talk to you about adjacent areas around smartphones. That was the topic uh, that was given to me. So hope to give you some thoughts from our perspective and, and get some ideas going. Uh, once he gets the presentation up and running, shall I do it for it? Oh, it can't see the screen here. Ah, OK. Working? Yeah. Is this the one? OK. I'll give you a little bit of background uh, about us, uh, so as to say why we can talk a little bit about the smartphone revolution. Uh, Qualcomm Ventures Group is present in about seven geographies uh, around the world, including India, China, Korea, Israel, Latin America, and Western Europe, and the US. Uh, we've been investing in the mobile ecosystem for about uh, 15 years or so with a large portfolio. And we're also ranked number one uh, in corporate VC by CB Insights last year. Some additional insights about us is these are some of the companies that we worked with around the globe to give you a glimpse. Uh, we think that we can work a little bit in wireless global networks as well as social data. And some of the deals here at Invences uh, was a sensor that went public in the US market. Xiaomi, I'm, I hope you all know about Xiaomi and help us make it more successful uh, in India. Waze was acquired by uh, Google for the social element in mapping. And Fitbit went public last year uh, in the healthcare area. This is a snapshot of our Indian portfolio companies. Uh, we have been here since 2007 and have a 150 million India dedicated fund. We invest across four sectors, hardware, infrastructure, and devices. So Xiaomi came out of that. Software and platform, consumer applications, and healthcare. And we are proud to say we just invested in Mindtickle, which is a Pune-based company. We completed that transaction last year and look forward to do many more deals in Pune. Some of the other notable companies include Portia, which is in, in healthcare, and Capillary which is also an uh, enterprise SaaS company here. Uh, Reverie is another company that does local language for India. So uh, the presentation prior to me, the SBI gentleman, we really want to make digital India happen in local languages. So very keen to build a local stack of phone as well as tablets uh, based in India. A quick snapshot of another program that we run is called QPrize, which is a seed contest. Uh, it has had multiple winners over the six years. The last winner was Arc Robotics. Which, which makes a robot for warehouses. And most of these companies have now gone, um, gone in and raised about $50 million or so in capital. So we will be coming out with the next edition of QPrize uh, in 2017. We just finished uh, the edition of 2016 in, in March. Now is the interesting talk. This is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, I have picked four or five areas that are adjacent to smartphones. I'm going to go through one, and then I'm going to let you guys decide uh, the other two areas that we talked about. You know, the architecture of smartphone has really improved over time. Uh, you know, we remember the 2G phones we had not more than two years ago uh, were really clunky. Since then, the CPU has really improved. The GPU has really improved, along with it, the camera position, location, and the sensors. So with that, we find ourselves, the architecture to now be applicable in robotics, in digital health, data center, fintech, and automotives. And these are just five big areas that I picked. I'm sure there are many more uh, outside of this. I'll quickly comment on uh, robotics. 
Uh, after robotics, what would be your favorite topic? Show of hands for uh, digital health. OK, show of hands for FinTech. OK, and data centers. OK, we have about the same number of hands. So I'll just try and cover uh, the number of topics possible in the time given to me. And if you are interested in any additional areas, I'm, I'm around and happy to uh, catch up with you. Let me talk about, about robotics why we think uh, it's time to get serious about robotics. We actually came up with a Snapdragon flight platform, which now combines seven different PCBs in one. It was released last year. What it does to you is you get the flight controller, you get GPS receiver, you get video transmitter, as well as camera, and the uh, co communication model. And all of that comes in one PCB, which you can then take out to market and build your system around it. So I think what's happened to drones over the last year is that it has now, it's starting to get horizontalized. That means you can build your solution on top and don't have to worry about building each and every block in-house. So I think this is really the trigger point. Uh, this combined with uh, the five or six technologies uh, that are available outside of the platform, which will include location, uh, you know, a very high level of audio and video can now, you know, help you make a drone on your own very, very quickly. We think that drones will be applicable in many areas. Uh, I think we saw the flying uh, drone for delivery in the SBI presentation. So I think transportation is, uh, is one area where we think it will be also applicable in autonomous cars. Uh, one of our portfolio companies, Cruise Autonomous, just got bought by GM uh, two weeks ago in order to do the same, which is get autonomous driving inside the car. And all of that is possible because of this technology platform that's been built. The second area is in healthcare. We have seen caregiver robots, or people who will give company to aging population, or uh, you know, something that keeps them, uh, as you age, a way of continuing life in good spirit. So healthcare is another area where there will be application uh, of drones or robotics. The third area is smart homes. Uh, I think there are a bunch of companies in Pune in the smart home areas where we want to do either control our electricity bill or control our experience at home. And all of that is again possible because of the robotics platforms that are out there. If you expand the smart home uh, category, then you get into the smart cities where uh, this concept is now expanded not just to individual homes, but also to something called public safety drones. How many of you watch the uh, drones that did the surveillance during 26th of Jan in Delhi? Any of you notice them? No. Okay. So there were drones flying around in Delhi uh, in order to make sure uh, that there are, if, if there is terrorist attack or if there are points of congestion, that they would notify the parade ahead of time rather than being reactive to it. And we saw that implementation in India. I think the company's Idea Forge uh, from Mumbai, they had the drones flying in Delhi to do the same. Uh, I think there's another company in Pune, which is outside, which is Navstick, which is creating a framework uh, for robotics uh, in research institution and many other areas. So I think you can take the basic framework of robotics, and whether you create drones, whether you create uh, a robot that keeps company to your family or that does transportation, I think it's really your imagination uh, that can build multiple applications uh, in robotics. Uh, this, this is really the you know, uh, tip of the iceberg. You can take each of these uh, subsectors and really drill down. But I think for the benefit of time, I'll, I'll keep moving on. But I think this is a big opportunity going forward. Uh, and in India, we, we do have talent. I think the NASDAQ guys outside Idea Force, they demonstrate that real, real depth in robotics technology in India. Arc Robotics, which was other portfolio company that we invested in early this year, they also have great talent in this area. So this is one area you guys should definitely look into as you look for new areas for entrepreneurship. The second area I wanted to quickly talk about because I got the same uh, show of hands uh, for all of these areas. I think uh, you know, the statistics are, are big in healthcare. It doesn't matter whether it's related to obesity or it's related to chronic disease management or aging. I think it's just a very large TAM, what we call uh, in our world. The total available market is really large. Why we think digital healthcare will happen is that we have lots of sensors now in the phone or in the wearable. Uh, you know, there are a long list here, but the ones that are really relevant uh, in digital health are the biometric health sensor or the motion sensors. So you have a lot of data available in the platform that you can use, again, just like robotics, to build an application uh, in digital health. 
Uh, you have touch sensors, you have heart monitors, your blood pressure, all of these are actually coming out as sensors in the phone platform. So I gave three examples of uh, verticals within the digital health. You have disease management or detection, where you don't have to go into the labs anymore, it becomes portable. Uh, you can have a machine at home or uh, somebody can bring it to your home and you can detect whether you have anemia. This diagram is for rig nanosystems out of Delhi. They created this machine to uh, detect uh, anemia. They felt that was a huge challenge in India. So you have the portable ECG machines, you have uh, portable machines to check diabetes. Now you're going to get other areas of pathology labs that will come to your home. So I think a lot of opportunity in this area. The second one is health management. Uh, everybody knows Fitbit, so I uh, don't want to comment a lot here, but what Fitbit did was it made you in control of your health. You could count your steps, you could count your sleep, and then come up with what would be a good pattern for a healthy living for you. This is possible, again, because of the sensors, as well as the ability to communicate uh, the data that it gathered with the phone platform or the PC platform. And so in health management, you can see other opportunities in chronic disease management, et cetera, that will drill down on the same uh, sensors and, and collect data either at home or as you, as you are moving. The third one which is applicable to India given the fact that we don't have enough doctors or enough number of hospitals uh, here is an, a large aging population uh, is really at home care. Uh, so Porte, our portfolio company, uh, provides that at home and it's really possible because of the devices now that have been brought to market. All the devices that, you know, in the first category of disease management now enable services like Portia to be possible in India. So I think you could drill down on these three and, you know, come up with many other areas of uh, new ideas really to help India, which is in a very peculiar condition compared to rest of the world with respect to availability of doctor, availability of hospitals, as well as the vast population that we have in the country. The third area that I wanted to talk about was fintech. Uh, I think the uh, SBI folks were, were really great about how the existing banking systems are getting better uh, with technology. But I feel that there are other areas in, in fintech that are coming up, and I'll just do a quick glance of two of them. Uh, how many of you know that every move that you do on the phone is now tracked? Now, there is no privacy uh, in the world of smartphone, right? We forget to turn off the GPS I try to do that every time, but I know every time I get an Uber, I always forget to turn it off, post that, right? All my transactions are being tracked. Uh, somebody's keeping a history of my credit card transaction, net banking transaction, et cetera. And it's not just happening to you and me, it's also happening to the businesses. Uh, most of the information now the businesses file is actually trackable. Whether it is ROC information or it's a supplier on Amazon, all of that is getting tracked. So I think that's really the building block uh, which is making, you know, taking whether you're a supplier on e-commerce or you and I transacting online or our Aadhaar identity, which are really the basic building blocks or API, which will make new sort of uh, applications available in fintech. And I think one uh, area that I feel will be available is really credit. I think it will start to open up credit. Uh, you know, we did, we did a study and it appears that only 120 million people in India have a credit score. That's it. Uh, and we are a country beyond that, even if you look at the middle class population. So now, uh, with the information that's available, whether you're a merchant or you're a consumer, any of these services can pull up information on you very, very quickly. Uh, I think SBI commented on CRM uh, being up and operational and ability to do that within minutes. And now we are seeing that the same in, the, in case of loans or credit card or EMI you will be able to figure out uh, whether the institution can give you that particular instrument within minutes as opposed to days. Uh, I think you guys should look into uh, the Aadhaar API, which is now getting accessible. UPay is another API that the uh, NPCI has made available. So with those two and all the data that's in the market, uh, we think there'll be lots of opportunities. Credit is one. Uh, there are many others uh, within FinTech that will open up as a result of this. This one is, is uh, dear to my heart, but really, really early, uh, the data center opportunity. And this is relevant, I think, for Pune because we have lots of security companies in Pune, lot of heritage in terms of deep knowledge of uh, software, uh, software as a service or enterprise software. There's an interesting shift happening in data centers. Uh, you, we all know that data centers have very heavy servers. 
very strong in uh, the hardware piece and comparatively lighter on the software piece. What we think is that the data center is going to shift from the high power hardware tech to a low power hardware tech. I know it all sounds counterintuitive, uh, but you know, humor me for a minute. The reason why it's going to happen uh, is the new phone, which is really people are used to now consuming uh, most of the software as a service on the go. And in that, it really started off with ARM. ARM was not as powerful as the CPU in the PC. So the software had to become really, really smart in order to make use of the low power CPU. We think the same shift will happen on the server side, where the CPU will become low power, which is a combination of ARM or Flash. And you'll have to build software which is much, much more intelligent than the software that exists in the data, data uh, center stack today. And here, whether it is security, virtualization, network optimization, all of those building blocks will have to be rebuilt. And we think this is a green, you know, really a greenfield opportunity. Uh, ARM-based uh, ARM servers will come into market, I think, another two, three years down the road. Uh, on top of that, there'll be an opportunity to build all of these layers of, of software and transform the data center from what it is today to something that can be consumed on the phone uh, as software as a service instead of it being on-premise when you were sitting at your desk on the computer. It will also drive SaaS model. The reason being that if you're not sitting at your desk and you are mobile, uh, the, the obvious model that makes sense uh, is a SaaS model in that scenario. So given your expertise in, uh, in the security as well as enterprise software, we expect to see more companies from Pune to take advantage of the data center opportunities. I'll cover uh, the last one, and I think I'm out of time uh, here, which is uh, the in-car, which is the automobile, which we view as the fourth screen uh, from, from our standpoint. Uh, there are lots of opportunities here, uh, whether they're on the dashboard or they are on the back side. Uh, the one that I'm highlighting here, and I'm sorry, the graphics doesn't come out as well, uh, is a company called NavD, which we invested in San Francisco. They are telling you where you're going, uh, the navigation, the calls that come through on the dashboard. You see the little screen here uh, that sits on top of the dashboard. And you can see, get directions. You can hear uh, your audio calls. So you don't have to look down. Uh, it's, it saves, it makes you a safe driver, and at the same time increases your productivity. I think the Car IQ guys based in Pune are also doing something very interesting about figure, figuring out the health of your car figuring out uh, centers that would be nearby for you to get it serviced and alarming you when the car needs to be serviced. We talked a bit about uh, you know, uh, autonomous cars that we covered in robotics, but that's another area that will come into the uh, automobile as we see it uh, go through the in the next two years. RevSmart is another company, I think, out of Chennai. They are doing a smart helmet. So, uh, since India is a two-wheeler country, as you are sitting on the, uh, you know, driving your two-wheeler automobile, you can get directions, uh, you can get emer you know, emergency notifications about congestion, traffic, or accidents on the road go by. So I think there is a lot of opportunity, whether it is driver-related services or entertainment in the car, in the automobile sector. I think I'll pause now because I'm out of time, but happy to take any questions or uh, catch up with you guys later in time. No, more, no time, OK. No time for questions, so happy to catch up later. Okay, if they have any, I'll be happy to take them. No? Okay. <laughs> Parik from Walking Tree, a company actually involved in UX and big data IoT side. Okay. So I was in, like looking at one of the screen. You talk about like you know all the big servers going to something which is like you know very small server and basically commodity machines. Uh, we would like to understand more from you that you know what's the Qualcomm's perspective of coming out with such technology going forward. Right. So it is very very early stage. Uh, you know it's, that's why I said it's greenfield uh, opportunity. We are working on it, and I think the, the entire ecosystem is working on it. Uh, so we announced uh, that we would be working on these chips in China for the data center based on ARM, and they would uh, come out sometime during the next two to three years. Uh, the other guys who, who are working around it would be all the ARM-related licensees uh, in the marketplace. The reason we think there is opportunity is that the phone, like I said, the transition point really is using the phone to consume most of these, device, most of these services, and hence 
you transfer from an on-premise installation to a service on the go. That's one from a user standpoint that really makes this transition. And the, the, the second one is now you then transform the data center from heavy hardware into light hardware, but very, very intelligent software. So though that's really required to make this happen. But it's a greenfield opportunity. I see that hap you know, developing in the next two to three years. In the meantime, SaaS models will start to work. So Mindtickle, for example, from Pune is a SaaS company trying to make sure that the Dabur uh, salesman out in the hinterland is updated with software that he needs. So the SaaS application transition will happen because that's the only way you can consume it on the mobile phone in India. And then the post that, you'll see the transformation in the data center side. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank you. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, Varsha, for those deep insights into digital <laughs> health, automobile, fintech, and the data center. Varsha, would like to present you the Memento as a token of our appreciation.